Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at setting up your system for spring development. Uh, this tutorial is not as straightforward as I'd like it to be because um, you have to make some choices um, depending on what your existing knowledge is and on what you've already got installed. But I'm going to tell you how to set up your system for spring development and we're going to be talking about the tools that we're going to be using in these tutorials. So uh, the first thing you need is you need to be able to develop Java applications and you're going to need to install uh, JDK. Uh, you, you can install JDK Standard Edition if you want, Java Development Kit. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because I'm assuming that you're already pretty familiar with Java if you're following this tutorial which is kind of quite advanced. Um, you can install Java Standard Edition if you want to develop web applications, then you're either going to need to install Java JDK EE Enterprise Edition, or you could use JDK SE Standard Edition, but you might need to go in and find a servlets.jar or something like that. So if you don't know what you're doing, uh, the easiest thing is to install JDK EE. The next thing you need is an, an uh, integrated development environment, an IDE, in which to develop your Spring program. Uh, so I'm going to be using Eclipse in these tutorials. If you search for Eclipse and go to eclipse.org and go to the Downloads page. Now here, again, you've got several choices. Uh, one thing you could do, which I'm not going to do in, in this series of tutorials, is download the Spring tool suite. And this is Eclipse with some plugins pre-installed. And that sounds great, but um, documentation for Spring Tool Suite, at least uh, right now, doesn't seem to be all that great. And I actually found it really confusing. I was really enthusiastic about it when I discovered it. And then I just found that, to me, it made the whole business of Spring development more confusing because I wasn't sure like what was Spring and what was this Spring Tool Suite. So to get a, a grip on what Spring actually is, to my mind, it's easiest if you don't use Spring Tool Suite, but that's up to you and you probably can follow this series of tutorials pretty well using Spring Tool Suite. Uh, so it, it's, it's worth considering, I guess. Um, now, your other two options here are um, either install Eclipse IDE for Java EE Enterprise Edition developers, and this allows you to develop web applications or install Eclipse IDE for Java developers. If you install the, this Eclipse IDE for Java developers, like the non-EE edition, then uh, either you um, can stick to developing non-web Spring applications or you can add uh, the WTP plugin to your standard Eclipse and then that turns it into basically this the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. So again, simplest option, uh, the one I recommend here is install Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. But another option is standard edition. And then later on, if you want to develop web stuff, you can add the WTP plugin. That's the web tools platform uh, plugin for Eclipse. Let's go back to my list of stuff here. Um, so yeah, we've covered Eclipse and the JDK. Um, I want to talk briefly about how to install Eclipse plugins because we're going to now have to install several plugins and there are two ways of doing it in Eclipse, at least at the moment. So if you go to Eclipse, um, it seems like this is not present in every version of Eclipse, but uh, at least in the standard version, you can go to the Eclipse Marketplace and the Eclipse Marketplace doesn't seem to include every plugin, but if it's present in your version of Eclipse, and if the plugins you want are there, that's the easiest way to install them. Go to the Eclipse Marketplace and just search in this box here for the plugins that you need, and then just kind of click to install them. That's the easiest method of installing a plugin in Eclipse. The other method, which you might have to use if your plugin isn't in the Marketplace, or if your version of Eclipse doesn't have this marketplace link for some reason, is uh, it seems to change between the window and help menu. 
and it, it changes the name as well. But there's always an option that's something like install new software or update software or something like that. And uh, you can find this, a screen that looks something like this, and you'll have a button something like this where you can add a repository URL here. So you find the plugin that you want to install on the internet, find the Eclipse repository URL for your version of Eclipse, and uh, type, make up a name here. This is just for your purposes. You can type anything for the name. Click OK, and then check the right boxes, and then just go through the install procedure. And that's the kind of fallback way of installing things in Eclipse uh, if you need it. Now, the, the plugins that you'll need for Spring development are, uh, you'll need one called Maven Integration for Eclipse. Uh, it's, it's annoying that you kind of need Maven to develop Spring applications. Uh, you have to understand Spring is nothing but an API. It's nothing but a bunch of jars. And then you create XML files uh, and you develop Java applications just using those jars and some XML files that you create. The difficulty is that uh, the jars that Spring uses are all over the place on different websites. Spring uses different open source jars and it's easiest to use Maven to pull in those jars. Don't worry if you don't know Maven because we'll be covering Maven uh, to the extent you need it in, the, in this series of tutorial videos. So um, once you've got Eclipse installed, search for Maven integration for Eclipse. Or you can use the uh, Maven plugin of your choice, but this is the one that I'll be using here. And uh, in fact, it's easiest if you install this from the marketplace that I just showed you. So try to do it there. And if you can't, then search for it on the internet and um, then click around for installation instructions and try to find that URL I think it's here, try to find the update site for Eclipse that you can paste into that box that I just showed you and then install it that way. So um, yeah, this is talking about installing into Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers, which is which is great. So, um, and you have to pick the right one for your version of Eclipse. So uh, you can do it that way if you can't find it in the marketplace. And this Maven plugin will allow us to pull in the jars that we need without having to go off to different websites and find the right versions of them. We can just do it all from within Eclipse. Uh, you'll need an internet connection. Um, of course, that's that's also true in order to use Maven. Now, uh, the next plugin that you'll need is Spring IDE. Uh, so search for Spring IDE. You might want to add Eclipse in there as well. And again, try to do this from within the marketplace because it's the easiest option by far. And if for some reason you can't use Eclipse Marketplace, then you're going to have to search around on here and somewhere you'll find the Eclipse um, update site. I don't know where, it's, it's on here somewhere. Yeah, I think it's this lot. I click the download button and add this URL to your Eclipse installation to reach this solutions update site. So again, if you can't find this in the marketplace, the Spring IDE, which in spite of the name is just an Eclipse plugin, then you have to use this uh, update site and paste it into the box that I showed you earlier and install it that way. Um, the, the Spring tool suite that I showed you, we saw that in the um, list of downloads for Eclipse is a version of Eclipse with stuff pre-installed. But because, to my mind, uh, the documentation for it is quite bad and you start feeling like you, you're you kind of tied to this, even if it's an illusion, for that reason, I, I these reasons, I, I prefer to install stuff myself in Eclipse and that's what I'll be doing in these tutorials. And and uh, usually these, these plugins install fairly smoothly and it, it's not so bad. So uh, by now, hopefully you've got JDK, uh, EE if you want to do web development. You've got Eclipse and EE if you want to do web development, again, in Spring. You've got Maven integration for Eclipse and you've got Spring IDE, which is another Eclipse plugin. Now, uh, if you want to do web development, then um, you have to understand Spring is not like a freestanding thing that enables you to do some uh, web development in Java without reference to any other technology. Uh, it's, it's just that um, Spring itself, Core Spring, is just a way of kind of organizing 
Java applications and the kind of way of doing um, Java programming using uh, stuff like XML files or annotations. It's a way of connecting together your Java code. Part of Spring is it's called Spring MVC. Spring MVC. This is a part of uh, Spring. And this is the bit that lets you do web development if you want to. And Spring MVC uh, uses kind of standard Java web application technology. So knowing how to use that is a prerequisite for that for this course. To follow this course, you should be able to develop a non-Spring Java web, web application first. And if you if you don't have that knowledge, what you can do is uh, I've got some tutorial videos that you can watch for free. Go to www.caveofprogramming.com. Find on here my Java Servlets and JSPs course. Click on that. And at the moment, this is hosted on udemy.com. And although the whole course is not free, so uh, I'm, I'm afraid you'll have to pay if you want a whole complete course on uh, Java web development. But the first uh, seven videos here are free. I don't know if I've got more free videos, maybe not, but the first seven are free. You can just click on them, watch them directly, make sure you switch them to HD, high definition, and they will take you from just knowing basic Java all the way to deploying your first web application. So um, I strongly recommend if you don't know web application development in Java and you want to do it in Spring, before you do the web part of this tutorial series, go here and learn how to do basic um, Java web applications uh, because we'll, we'll, you'll need that knowledge to develop um, the same things using Spring. Spring is an extra, more advanced step after this stuff. Now these videos take you through uh, some of the stuff I've just told you, like installing Eclipse EE. Uh, plus they take you through installing a, uh, a server as well in this video here. And just quickly, if you already have this knowledge and you don't want to look at these videos, then let me just explain that to do web development in Eclipse, besides knowing how to develop Java web applications, then you need to install a server. And uh, the one I'd recommend is Tomcat because it's the most common server, Java web application server that people use. So just search for um, Search for Apache Tomcat, Apache Tomcat, and install that and get it running on your system. And then once it's running on your system, you can then shut it down and then uh, start using it from within Eclipse. And if you need more information on that process, again, I'll refer you to my uh, Java Servlets and JSPs course, which you can find on caveofprogramming.com. So I think I've covered everything. This must be about the seventh or eighth time I've recorded this video. I keep forgetting stuff. But I think that's it. There's one last thing that's, um, as far as I can think now, that's, that's kind of optional. And that is that um, I'm going to, in one video in this course, I'm going to show you how to use Maven on the command line. Now, that's it's optional to um, follow that through yourself. Uh, the reason I'm going to show you that is to kind of demonstrate what Maven is in itself, aside from Eclipse and why we're using it. Uh, so you don't have to install Maven separately yourself. If you do want to know how to use Maven on the command line and you want to be able to follow through uh, that particular video later on practically doing it yourself, then search for Maven and install Maven on your system. And you also need to add the Maven bin directory where the Maven program resides to your path environment variable and you can Google that if it's gobbledygook for you or else just don't bother with this because for um, in this series of tutorials I'm only going to show you this just because it'll help you understand Maven and for most of the this tutorial series we're going to be using Maven from within Eclipse and there's not going to be a lot of Maven there's just going to be a bit of clicking in order to get the jars that we need for spring development. Phew, so um, a lot of a lot of stuff, and uh, if you're coming to this only knowing core Java, then I would suggest your task now is to go ahead and set up your system for developing Java web applications and develop a Hello World web application just using that stuff before you then follow the rest of this tutorial series onwards. But if you're feeling confident, 
and uh, you're watching this on the train or something, um, alternatively, then uh, of course keep watching and we'll get on to developing some uh, non-web Spring applications to start with. In fact, first we're going to look at using Maven to develop a Java app. And then we're going to look at basic Spring applications, like non-web applications, so you see how Spring works. And uh, then we're going to move on to developing Spring web applications in these tutorials. So uh, if you're watching on YouTube, this is part. This is a free video that's part of a bigger course. Um, and you can find the complete course by clicking on the link in the description on YouTube. And you can always find my latest stuff by going to www.caveofprogramming.com and I've got lots of free videos, free tutorials on there as well as some paid ones. So check that out. Uh, that's it for this time and until next time, happy coding.